Hi and welcome to The Property Show, your real estate partner. Holiday homes communities are increasingly becoming a game changer with high-end addresses offering unique residential properties and the ultimate holiday destination. Today we highlight yet another opportunity for your dream holiday home, the perfect retirement location and investment opportunity, the Abadea Hills Golf Resort. Kenya Homes Expo is here with us again. The organizers will highlight on what we should expect this time round. At Home with Nancy knocks at another door, filled with joy and excitement. On the accessory spot, I give you tips on decorating and a few tricks you can use to make a small space functional and stylish. Customer experience changes with orange as Kenya power turns night into day. As always, sit back and enjoy the show. There is something for everyone. Imagine living in a community offering luxurious, eco-friendly homes Acres of recreational space nestled among natural forests, privacy, security, and a host of on-site amenities, Abadea Hills Golf Resort. And that's where we are today. Let's hear what they have for us. Karibu Sana on the show and thank you for having us. Welcome. This is Abadea Hills Golf Resort, Naivasha. We are sitting on 1,650 acres land, subdivided into two main parcels. We have the North Parcel which hosts the golf resort, and we have the southern parcel, which we are calling the commercial hub. Take us through the vision and project outline. Abadea Hills Golf Resort aims to give a few Kenyans an opportunity to own a home, an opportunity to work, and also an opportunity to have recreation activities. So in that line, in our northern parcel, where we are hosting a 72 per golf resort, the golf course is to international standards, professional golf association approved. And uh, along the golf course, we have a natural gorge, which will host about three holes. Uh, it's an 18 hole golf course. And uh, three holes being in the gorge makes it uh, extraordinary away from the normal courses. Also, we have footprints. Those are homes that will be around the fairways and uh, homeowners will have an opportunity to view all actions along the golf resort. We also have plots. Our terrain is diverse and we are going to host villas that uh, will range between 100 million and above depending on what you would want it to look like. Our villas have their own swimming pools, they have their own tennis courts and that is a lifestyle that will attract people who are looking to retirement and also opportunities to live as family and bigger household. Away from that, in the main parcel also, we have what we call Chapachula village homes. Those range from 110 to 300 square meters in terms of built up areas, and they are all on an eight acre plot. Again, those ones are much affordable because they range between 16 million and 42 million. Externally, we have guidelines that are very specific just to make sure we are controlling the theme of the project. But internally, we are free to allow all our clients to customize to their taste. As you went around, I believe you saw that uh, some of the clients' homes will become the show home eventually yes. because they have tried to change and maneuver what we provided as the standard show home. Wow. What else is attractive for people who are interested in buying here? We agree that Naivasha has turned to be a commercial hub, both in recreation, conferencing, and above all, it's hosting a lot of industrial areas. What that tells us as Abadea Hills Golf Resort is that there is now a demand for housing, both to the employees and the staff of such coming up organizations. Naivasha is also a floriculture, horticultural hub. That means there are a lot of economic activities, which we all agree promote the economy of Nakuru County. We are also part of the flower farms because we have panda flowers. And in that line, we agree that the housing element in Naivasha has come up. It is in that line that Abadea Hills Golf Resort, one, is looking at a conferencing facility that will host more than 2,000, and of course with about 200 keys. 
the standard gauge railway we all know is coming to Naivasha and that will also increase the economic activities in terms of timelines and deliverables, transportation becomes easier for commodities from Naivasha. We have a proposal of the second airport coming again in Naivasha and especially so near our site. And also we know that uh, Naivasha is a peace resolution center with what is happening, we know that anytime there is a meeting to resolve issues, even in the government scenario, and across Africa, we find those meetings in Naivasha. So Abadea Hills, with the expansive parcel of land we have, we are looking to a conference hub. We are also looking to host such meetings within our site. That means the activities that will bring people to our site, and I can assure those who are looking to own homes for investment purposes, from the management point of view, They'll be able to get clients throughout the year. That means their rental income can be assured to almost 80% per annum. You know, when you mention a house costing 100 million, it sounds too expensive for a Kenyan. How much are the plots going for if I wanted to buy a plot here? Well, um, Abadea Hills Golf Resort has come up with a plan that accommodates everybody because essentially what we are looking at is that every Kenyan can afford to own something with us and basically to live, work and play. In that line, through the diverse parcel, we have different products with different affordable levels. For example, we have Royal Homes, which we launched in February. It has 300 plots. And as we speak, 150 are gone. They've been going for 1.5 million up to July. From July, we, they hiked to 2 million. And uh, we have an offer of the same for an eight acre plot for 2 million at Royal Homes up to 31st October. We have Chapachula Village Homes. We are offering plots at the same area at 5 million for an eight acre plot. Then we have villa plots, which go from 10 million for an eighth of an acre, all the way to 100 million. The villa plots may not be specific in pricing because it depends on where they are along the, the footprints that could fetch higher. And those that are near the village homes could be between 10 million to 100 million. 1,650 acres is actually a very big project. What are you offering in terms of infrastructure? Abadea Hills Golf Resort is offering serviced plots. The main power supply is available, but we are looking also into hydropower supply and weed power and solar. For sewerage system, in the pipeline is a few companies vetting to do sewerage systems and management that will ensure reuse that means there will be a lot of recycling because we need a lot of water to maintain the green, both within the homeowners' compounds and also at the golf course. In terms of um, water, we have five approved dams and we've already sunk two. We also have dams, both natural and man-made. And uh, away from just supply of water, those dams will attract water sport activities. In terms of uh, security, we already have a 2.5 meter boundary wall and it will be overlaid with a high voltage electric fencing and also CCTV surveillance from the main security gate. And homeowners, through automation, they will be able to control visits to their homes because they can determine who, who is at the door before they even open. Abadea Hills Golf Resort, therefore, to homeowners, we are offering smart solutions, so therefore a smart city. So they can be sure it's going to be safe very safe indeed. As you moved around, especially at the show home, mm. you realized that all our windows and doors that are sliding are UPVC. Yes. Reason being, security is okay. And when you're enjoying the facilities inside your home, we want to make sure you're mingling with nature. What is unique in terms of social amenities you'll be offering here? On the southern parcel, Abadea Hills Golf Resort has a commercial hub. This is a home to apartments. It's also home to the main conference facility. We will be offering two sub-developers opportunities to bring up schools, hotels, and uh, a mall. I can assure the homeowners they will live, work, and play because all facilities and needs that they would be looking for will be within just a, an arm's length. And that is what the Southern Passage is all about. We have already brought in sub-developers. We are vetting them so that we have different providers for the different uh, facilities. I see you're also offering your own building materials. Tell us about that. Abadea Hills Golf Resort has a block factory and a timber factory within the site. 
this is just to make sure that we don't compromise on the standards. We have a laboratory, that means all the materials we are using are up to standards because our laboratory is also approved by KEBS. Thank you so much for having us and indeed it's a beautiful project. Give us your parting shot. Abadea Hills Golf Resort has an open day on 31st October and Nancy, we have a diverse product to accommodate every Kenyan, any possible potential client and we are welcoming them, one to see, feel and touch. Let all roads read to Naivasha on 31st. I'm sure you're going to give us the bus tour as usual, you're good in that. And let's see and meet everybody. Once they see, touch and feel, they'll come budgeting for one. I'll assure you they'll buy two. Wow. Thank you, Judy Lea. And of course, we'll see you on the 31st on the open day. Thank you, Nancy. See you then. Abadea Hills Golf Resort pride themselves of being a unique development, setting a new benchmark for master plant communities in Africa. Make a date with me for the bus tour, a day full of fun and register now. The resort is situated in Naivasha, 90 kilometers northwest of the Kenyan capital, Nairobi. In the heart of Kenya's Great Rift Valley, one of the planet's most outstanding geological features and a spectacularly peaceful setting. Schools within the vicinity include Naivasha Technical Training Institute, Naivasha Boys and Girls Secondary and Little Friends Primary School. The Aga Khan University Hospital and Naivasha District Hospital are there to serve you. Shopping centers including the Buffalo Mall, Naivasha Business Center and Karate Shopping Center are in close proximity with all major banks included. Aberdeer Hills Golf Resort brings a whole new concept of gated community living with a world-class golf resort and classic designs of villas and townhouses. The resort sits on 1,650 acres of land divided into southern and northern part. The southern part comprises of the Royal and Laleshwa homes, while the northern part has Chapachula Village. It offers residents the opportunity to buy stylish homes and build their own dream home. Accommodation includes entrance hall, spacious lounge with UPVC sliding door opening to the backyard, an enclosed dining area opening to backyard, well-fitted kitchen with enough storage cabinets and pantry, visitor's cloakroom, utility area, large windows to allow in natural light, spacious stairway leading to first bedroom ensuite with wardrobes, ensuite master bedroom with dressing area and wardrobes, and hardwood flooring. Salient features include CCTV, 2.5 meter stone wall overlaid with high voltage electric fence, ample parking space, clubhouse, entertainment hub, swimming pool, commercial center, school, hospital, hotel, mall, golf course par 72, fitness and wellness center, 72 kilometer jogging, walking, cycling track, sewerage and sanitation system, inbuilt automated irrigation system, Wi-Fi fiber optic high-speed internet, man-made dams for fishing and water sports, five boreholes purified drinking water, management and letting services for all residents on request. The price for the townhouses depends on the location and size of land used. The bus tour is here with us again. Remember to register today. Up next, customer experience changes with Orange. I learned of Orange after I was trying several prescribers, depending on the work I was doing at my place, and then I was being disappointed every time. And then, like the first challenge, like for example, I'm uploading something or I'm on an internet call, and then all of a sudden it goes hanging. Number two, I got somewhere where I have an urgent meeting, but I try to log in maybe to an internet, then there's no network coverage. I've also been disappointed by that. Those are maybe two reasons I've been disappointed by other networks. 
Then when I was just working, I met a friend uh, at Galeria in Bomas, and the friend told me, hey, what are you doing here? I told him, I'm trying to shop up for a good network that will not disappoint me. They say, why don't you try Orange? I said, okay, let me try. Then for the last five years, I've not been disappointed so far. Orange has consistently served me very well, especially both in Nairobi and also in upcountry places. I've never been disappointed by Orange. I've been using uh, Orange phones from that time, and also I've been using their modem, and also the hotspots, of which uh, like my family enjoys, and also my board of leaders, they enjoy it, especially uh, when you're having a meeting. Those are some of the products I've been using, and especially making calls, internet, Skyping, and all that and I've never regretted, neither have I been uh, disappointed by the offer that I received from Orange so far. My key benefit is uh, being updated and also being on all the time. Anybody is looking for me, both by phone and also by internet, I'm always available. I'm never offline because of the nature of my work. At my home, I use the Domino hotspot, of which uh, has been of great benefit to my family. Unlike before, whereby each one was trying to use their different networks and sometimes they are hanging. But with the Domino, once logged in, all the family members can use it and the speed is the same, serving us all the same without regrets. And we enjoy it. We are happy. We are happy. We even sometimes do like a small family conference whereby we are all logged on on Gmail and uh, we are all chatting all together as a family, enjoying the same. It is never disappointing. Orange customer service, by the way, is one of the best, the way they are doing. And like the other networks whereby you can call for more than five hours, you never have an opportunity to talk to customer care. Sometimes you call, you call. But with Orange, any time I call them, even in the middle of the night, they will serve me well. And another thing that impresses me is that after I've told them my problem and they have helped me out, they still kindly ask you another question. Is there anything else you would like to help you or to assist you? And also sometimes they even tell you another new product that they have come up with. That is so kind and courtesy of them, so I like the way they do it. I will advise, especially anybody watching me or anybody having a struggle, suffering uh, disappointments of other networks, try Orange. I can guarantee you, you won't be disappointed. Count it on me, try it, and you'll enjoy it. Visit an orange outlet in your neighborhood and stay connected. Coming up, expert segment. Kenya Homes Expo aims to provide an excellent platform for entrepreneurs who would like to introduce their ideas into the market. The Expo has grown tremendously with local and international exhibitors taking part in each edition of the four days event starting on 22nd to 25th October. The Expo, running with the theme Secure Your Dreams, aims to recognize the outstanding range of products and services in the real estate, finance, construction and interior decor and design industry. This is the biggest homes show in Eastern and Central Africa and is set to keep growing with more innovative ideas emerging. The Kenya Homes Expo is here with us again, enhancing creativity and showcasing the innovative ideas and concepts from different exhibitors. We engage the organizers to give us an overview of the event and why you cannot miss this event. Karibu Sana on the show. Thank you for having me, Nancy. Maureen, give us an overview of Kenya Homes Expo and why I should attend. Thank you. The Kenya Homes Expo is uh, the biggest home show in East and Central Africa. It is a forum that has given the real estate stakeholders and partners a level playing field where they can come and engage, interact with the potential and existing home buyers. Since its inception in 2005, the expo has always been held uh, twice a year in April and October for four days at the KICC. Our title sponsor is Blue Triangle Cement, hence the name Blue Triangle Cement Kenya Homes Expo. They've been our sponsors over the years and we highly appreciate the good support they've given us. Our other sponsors, of course, are Tononoka and Bolin Magic World. And what's the theme of this year's expo? Our theme this expo is uh, Secure Your Dreams. The upcoming event is 22nd Kenya Homes Expo, set to kick off from the 22nd of October to 25th of October at the KICC. 
as the event organizers, you expect that uh, at the end of the four-day event, most Kenyans would have uh, owned a home or would have moved a step closer to owning a home or a piece of land. Give us a few highlights of innovative products we should be looking out for at the expo. The visitors should expect a huge array of exhibitors in this coming expo. We have uh, both local and international exhibitors. This time we have uh, international exhibitors such as uh, Damak Properties from Dubai and a leading furniture designer from Dubai. We have one particular exhibitor who's Bolin Magic One. They will be showcasing the precast housing technology whereby it takes uh, you know, less than a week or two to put up a structure of a building. But in this time at the expo, they'll have really short time to, to set up a, a building. So we're looking at around two to three days to, for them to put up a house at the expo. What achievements have you realized at the expo? One of the notable key achievements I'll say is that we've been able to successfully get international exhibitors to come and exhibit at the Kenya Homes Expo. Another achievement I'll say is customer satisfaction because most of the exhibitors we have, 90% of them are return exhibitors. This shows that they get business every time they come to the expo so they always reserve the same same slots they have. And lastly, we find more Kenyans and uh, a lot of international visitors attending our exhibitions. As a developer, hearing about the expo for the first time and has a project somewhere, how can I plug in? We have our marketing executives ready at hand to give any necessary information that is required. Thank you, Maureen, for your time. Give us your parting shot. I'll encourage every Kenyan to visit the upcoming Kenya Homes Expo. This year's event is very special. We have a lot of exhibitors, both international and local, coming to showcase various products in the industry from real estate developers, agents, interior deco, kitchen and home appliances, and so much more. It's everything housing under one roof. Don't miss this event. Maureen, thank you so much for your time. And of course, we shall be at the Expo. Thank you for having me. The real estate landscape continues to change. Don't miss out on the upcoming Homes Expo and get a chance to network. Be the first to know what's new and most importantly, you will engage the mortgage providers as well. Make a date with us. Don't go away, we'll be right back. Coming up, Accessory Spot, Kenya Power, at home with Nancy, Property Gallery and much, much more. Don't go away. When it comes to home decorating, bigger isn't always better, and smaller doesn't mean cramped. With the right blend of furnishes, color, size, and accessories, it's possible to live large in a small space. While small spaces can be challenging to decorate and organize, there are a few tricks you can use to make them just as functional as larger spaces. First, be size smart. When buying furniture for small space, keep scale in mind. Furnishes should fit the space well, leaving plenty of area for you to move around. Nothing makes a small room look more cramped than filling it with furniture that are too big for the space. Secondly, free up your floor space. Smart use of wall space can open up floor space, which is often at a premium in small spaces. Some items must occupy floor space, such as sofas, tables, and chairs. Other items like lighting, TVs, and electronic components do not have to occupy floor space. Wall mounting TVs can be a great way to conserve floor space and create an appealing focal point for the room. Thirdly, your walls can work for you in other ways too. Since they are also one of the largest design elements, choosing a bright or light wall color can help a smaller room feel more open and airy. Fourth, adding mirrors is another way to make a room appear larger. You don't need to fit a full-length mirror on one wall. A series of smaller mirrors attractively positioned in a cluster can do the job just as well without being overwhelming. Carefully consider accessories you place on the wall. Too much will make them look cluttered and even smaller. Sometimes one or two thoughtful graphic elements are all you need to make a design statement. Fifth, lack of lighting can make a small room look positively cramped. Whenever possible, enhance the size and appeal of your rooms with plenty of light. 
Lastly, avoid dark colors around windows as they absorb more natural light. There you have it. Being short on space doesn't mean you have to be short on style and efficiency. Even small spaces can get an open, useful feel with the right design and decorating tactics. If you'd like to showcase unique interior designs, simply call us. Coming up, Kenya Power turns night into day. Thousands of Kenyans will benefit from access to affordable electricity connection following increased funding of electricity projects by the Africa Development Bank and the Government of Kenya. Today I'm pleased to welcome you to the uh, launching session of the bank-supported uh, two projects, the uh, Kenya Last Mile Connectivity Project and the uh, Kenya-Tanzania Interconnector. As you know, the bank has been playing quite an active role. Production, distribution, generation, interconnection, uh, wh whatever is required, we have remained a steadfast partner of the government of Kenya in making sure that indeed the government's vision of delivering energy to the people of Kenya and the region at large is indeed uh, met. And this is something we take great pride in. Not only have we been able to finance many of these projects, we have gone out and syndicated this with other partners. And in this case, I'm, I'm pleased to say that uh, Kenya-Tanzania Interconnector is being co-financed with the government of Japan through JICA. So our role is not only to be the sole financier, but we, we try to catalyze and convene others to come and support uh, Kenya's vision of energy. It comes as no surprise to all of you that the low level of access to electricity is impeding or holding back Kenya's economic development and the provision of basic services. This is a country with tremendous untapped potential and part of it is being constrained by the lack of energy. Therefore, this last mile connectivity project aims to support the GeoCase initiative to ensure increased electricity access to its population, and most particularly among low-income groups located in the counties and in the rural areas. The objective of the project, as you know, is to uh, exploit the uh, existing 35,000 distribution transformers through the extension of low-voltage networks to reach about one and a half million customers located in the vicinity of these transformers. We are now at 3.9 million households connected to the grid in the country. When we started this particular major campaign in March 2013, we had 2.2 households so in the last two years, we have connected 1.7 households, raising access rate to 49% as we speak today. And I think this is a milestone, particularly within the continent. We therefore want to appreciate this facility for one reason, that since 1922 up to March 2013, for 91 years, we connected only 2.2 million households. And the primary reason why it wasn't possible to enhance that access is because of the cost of connectivity. And even when it came down from actual cost, 35,000 shillings, it was still expensive to most ordinary Kenyans. And therefore, this facility really is a landmark facility that turns around lives as we know them today. We are going to be connecting 1 million customers per year. And as you know, the leadership of the country has committed itself to Kenyans that we should be able to achieve 70% access by the year 2070 and universal access by 2020. It is therefore a facility that has 
really opened up electricity to all ordinary Kenyans. And we want to thank African Development Bank for moving with speed. We are now discussing the second facility in less than two years. As an investor or a developer, there are many things you have to consider as you embark on your development project. One such critical and important thing is power. As you make plans for your development, it is important that you approach Kenya Power at the earliest stage possible. This will guarantee that as your development project proceeds, your plans for power are also ongoing. And with an additional 5,000 megawatts of electricity being injected into the power grid, you can be guaranteed that power costs are definitely coming down. Plan for power as you embark on your development project. Africa Development Bank and the Government of Kenya will also finance the Kenya Interconnector, which will link the Kenyan network to the South African power pool, providing opportunities for power trade in the Eastern and Southern Africa power pools. If you want to know when your county will be next, contact Kenya Power. Next, at Home with Nancy. Ownership discussion continues. Today we knock at Esther's door as she shares her inspiring journey to owning her dream home. Karibu Sana on the show. Thank you very much, Nancy. Who is Esther? Esther yeah. is a simple lady, a mother of two, and a wife of one. I'm a career banker and uh, I enjoy the outdoors. When did you decide to buy your own home? I've always wanted to have my own home. It's always been a journey. So I think the first walk into home ownership was as soon as I was able to afford a mortgage. And we bought a little flat that you helped us buy. Yes. Now the real challenge was always the home that we're going to raise our children in. And fortunately, we've been able to find that home about two years ago. I remember when you wanted to buy the flat. You didn't want just anything. You gave me a list of the things you'd want and where you'd want it. Yeah. How was that? Because I think that was the most challenging time. Buying the first house, we were very particular around where it was going to be, the area, because it had to be obviously accessible in terms of schools, in terms of uh, shopping and medical amenities. Also, the finish of the house was really important to us. That little apartment still also has raw stone in it. And a fireplace. Um, yes, a fireplace, which is something that was quite dear to me. It's got nice wooden floors. Exactly. So it was just that, you know, very nice, artistic, yet natural look that uh, has always been attractive for me. What would you tell an aspiring home buyer where to begin and what they should look out for? For anyone who's aspiring to buy a home, I think you have to look at what you really like. You need to consider the shape of your family. Are you going to have children, no children? There's also considerations around security. Are you buying a property in an area that you feel is secure? Um, that was a very key consideration for us. On top of that, I do think if, depending on what you like, if you have pets like I have pets, there needs to be a place at least for them to run around. So you really need to consider what you enjoy and then now take that to the area that you're looking for a house and, and that will help you to get to where you want. But you really do have to save. It's not a cheap affair. So the more you have saved, the more options you have looked at, the better off you're going to be. Because I know the apartment I helped you get, there was mortgage. What was the mortgage process? It's quite interesting because you know, the banks don't give you 100%. So there was a 10% deposit that was required, which had to come from savings. There's no other way you're going to fund it. On top of that, when you do go to the bank for a mortgage application, they look at your cash flow. So that's also one thing that you need to be building up regularly, which is a proper cash flow, because that's how you're going to be repaying the mortgage going forward. There are other considerations, certainly with the bank, which meant that stamp duty had to be paid. They don't cover that as part of the mortgage. There are also legal costs, which you as the home owner will have to make good on your own. There's also valuation fees because remember the bank is going to be taking the property as security. So they need to make sure that the value that you're purchasing the house for is equivalent to what they're going to be lending to you or even more. So that's a cost that has to come out of your pocket. The valuation is obviously a percentage 
of the cost of the property. So if you're buying a house for 10 million, it would be close to, say, between 1 and 5% of the value of the house. Also, in the event of any natural calamities like we've seen happening, insurance is very important. So there will be insurance of the property and also the contents inside. So that also comes from your pocket. This other additional costs will be 10% on top of what um, the mortgage value would be. So, so 10% deposit correct. and then another 10% closing costs. Correct, correct. And then when you walk into a house, the house is not always like you want it, yes. right? So you're always going to want to do something different to make it yours. Mm -hmm. So on top of looking for the legal fees and buying the house itself, there has to be a little bit of cushion mm -hmm. around the things that you want to do inside of the house. Wow. And after the apartment, you now bought this house. How was the journey to get now into your dream home? You know, you're already paying one mortgage and that already keeps you awake at night. But, you know, based on managing your cash flows properly, that should not be a problem. But getting into the actual home that I'm in right now, it was a journey. It took us about five to seven years to, first of all, identify the area that we wanted to live in. And once we identified the area we wanted to live in, we had to accelerate the payments um, on the apartment because it's, it's quite expensive to have two mortgages um, running at the same time. In that regard, we had to look at um, other options around how we could raise the money that's needed. Like we said, it's 10% on top of the purchase price that yes. you're looking for. Yes. We then rented out the apartment so we could get a little bit of um, additional income and looked at a place where we could um, afford to rent. And that was savings of up to six years on top of repaying the mortgage that we had. Once we were done with that, we were then able to find this property, which we then moved into. Now you're in your home? Yes, we so in a home for two years now. Fantastic. What would you do differently today if you were to start the journey again? If I were to start the journey again, what I would do differently is save up a lot more. Yeah. The first opportunity I had to buy a house or a property was probably when I was about 23 and I was more interested in buying a car than buying a property. And the property that had been offered to me at that time was prime in Westlands and it was interesting, that property was then bought um, by U Mobile. So the people who had properties in that area, it literally doubled. So I think all the people out there, it's um, your priorities. Property is a long-term investment, so you might not feel the immediate satisfaction, but it's something that will be with you for years and years to come. I would encourage anyone, it's get in and it will pay itself off. This house that we're in and the apartment that we're in has more than doubled um, over the years that we've had it. So that also becomes a saving. That's truly what an investment is. Wow, thank you so much. Okay. Let's see the house. This is our dining area. As you can see, it's very open, leading to the lounge, leading to the kitchen. We have a very open lifestyle, so I want to be able to be cooking and talking to my guests mm. and also talking to my children. So wow. this is how we actually do it. So let me take you to the favorite part of my house, the kitchen. Wow. So, this is the heart of every home. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> but more so for us because my husband and I both enjoy cooking. So before we go upstairs, let me just talk a little bit about the lounge. As you can see again, yes. in the theme of open spaces. I think what I love the most, like our first little flat, is that fireplace right. where we sit and spend quite a number of evenings together. The fireplace has a, another fireplace on the outside, oh. which you can then enjoy with guests when they come through. I like the windows as well. Yes, light. so yes. Um, what we found very beautiful about the development when we purchased into it is that the design was very different. Yes. It had um, all these open spaces. As you can see, there's very little wall, yes. a lot of glass. And then to accentuate that, we then added blinds mm -hmm. so that during the day, they all go up completely. Mm -hmm. It's like you're sitting outside. Yes, it's beautiful. Now, let's head upstairs. So here we're going to land in our family room. Mm -hmm where we spend a lot of time with the children, mm -hmm. um, watching TV and bonding. Right. Now, the favorite room is this way. So this is one of my favorite rooms because um, it's where my little people spend most of their time. Lovely. So, what's different about it is that um, the kids actually designed this oh, concept. Yes. really? Um, alongside an interior decorator, Fun Kids. So she came and understood what the children like and translated that into pictures and colors that the wow. kids enjoy. Wow. Esther, thank you so much for opening your home. You I must welcome. say, it's beautiful. Thank you, thank you. As Esther puts it, start saving early. The home ownership journey is one that is inspiring. If you'd like to inspire others, call on us and we'll be there to share your story.
The property gallery brings a selection of properties and plots in every price range. Let's have a look at what's available today. Camden Park Apartments, a place where you can call home. Camden Park Apartments is located in Siokamau along Mombasa Road. The apartments comprise of 60 units of two bedrooms each and is ideal for a young and growing family. This housing project offers an opportunity to own a first home that is secure, affordable, with well-designed interior finishes. Accommodation includes lounge, dining area, open plan kitchen with ample cabinets, utility area, family bathroom, first bedroom with MDF wardrobes, study area inside the children's bedroom, spacious master bedroom fitted with enough wardrobes, tiled floors, wrought iron, and large windows to allow in natural light. Salient features include children's playground, landscape gardens, borehole, backup generator, electric fence, 24-hour security, biodigester, shopping block, overhead water tanks, Cabra roads, and parking bay for each resident and additional parking for visitors. The price guide for these homes is 4.95 million Kenya shillings with an investment return of between 25,000 to 28,000 Kenya shillings per month. Riverside Mansion a contemporary design development, Riverside Mansion is located 5 kilometers from the Nairobi Central Business District of Riverside Drive. Accommodation includes open plan lounge with a dining area, three balconies, fitted kitchen with a walk-in pantry, wooden parquet flooring, built-in hand basin, three bathrooms, one bedroom ensuite, master ensuite, bedrooms have shared washroom and spacious inbuilt wardrobes. Common amenities include Man security with perimeter walls with razor wire, landscape gardens, and ample cabra paved parking. The price guide for this convenient apartment is 30 million Kenya shillings for the four bedroom apartment. If you're buying the unit as an investment, the rental income expected is 120,000 Kenya shillings per month. Longonot View Plots. Embrace these prime plots with panoramic view of Mount Longonot and Lake Naivasha. These plots are located 10 kilometers from Naivasha town on the scenic Maimahio Road and 1.5 kilometers off the main Maimahio Road opposite the main access road to Longonot's gate. This property is ideal for a holiday home, weekend getaway and small-scale horticulture. Kijani Ridge is ideally located along the Thika Superhighway, just 3 kilometers from the northern and eastern bypass junction, 5 kilometers from Thika, and 24 kilometers from the central business district. It offers naturally exclusive urban living on a land parcel of 150 acres with 145 half acre and 156 quarter acre plots, plus service plots for sale with a select choice of architectural house designs to choose from. There is a total of 12 house designs to choose from, varying from 3, 4, and 5 bed villas and bungalows from different architects. The full set of designs are available for viewing. There are a number of planned amenities which are a clubhouse, a school, a swimming pool, gymnasium, playground, and picnic areas. The price guide for a quarter acre on Kijani Ridge is 7.5 million Kenya shillings. You can share your questions and comments as well as view our listing on our Twitter, Facebook and YouTube channel. Call on us for private viewing. The bus tour is here with us again. Remember to register today. Thank you for watching The Property Show. Often we wonder when and where is the best time and place to buy. Today I'll share my views. Yes, 
I can confidently say this is the right time to buy. Why? Because the general trend of prices remain high and I project this will continue. I also see the economy growing at a healthy rate and expect this to continue in the future. The real estate returns, especially capital gains, have remained steady and in some areas we have seen rapid increase. I also expect the rate of rural urban migration to increase, which means there will always be demand for properties. As for the good areas to buy your dream home and residential properties, this depends on your personal taste and your ability to pay. For investment properties, I see areas of high capital gains are more appealing, especially along improved infrastructure. That's it for today. See you next Sunday as we highlight another upcoming development and I add my views on the next investment frontier. As always, there is something for everyone. Kwaheri!